Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and the peace of God our Father and the love of the Divine Son and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, this is a deserted place, it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, there is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, five loaves and two fish are all that we have. Then he said, bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting the women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. For well, those of you who are expecting the cardinal again this week, sorry, you're stuck with a little old me. For the past several Sundays, of course, we've been hearing in the gospel our Lord talking about and giving forth his parables. But today, we turn from the parables to a miracle, the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. And six different times in the four gospels, this miracle is reported. And yet not one of the accounts says that the Lord multiplied the loaves and fishes. But rather in all six accounts, the language that is used of the miracle is the language of the Eucharist, the language of the Mass that we hear. Jesus took the bread, looking up to heaven, gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples and the disciples in turn shared it with the crowds and all the accounts all those five thousand ate and were satisfied so much so that there were leftovers today we hear saint matthew's account and St. Matthew wrote his gospel, wrote his story about Jesus as the Messiah. He wrote that to a Jewish, Jewish audience. And so his gospel has very much a reflection of Jesus being the new and the all-powerful Moses. And so many of the writings of St. Matthew's gospel, the Jewish people would pick up immediately what Matthew was trying to say. And so this story of the feeding of the 5,000 is a very symbolic story for the Jewish people to know immediately and make the connection of Jesus being the new Moses. It's in a deserted place. And miraculously, the food was given to the people. The food from the heavens. The manna of the Jewish people, the desert from Egypt, going from exile to the promised land. And here Jesus is in a deserted place again, giving the people sustenance, but a sustenance of the future. The language of that first mass that will be offered on first Holy Thursday. And just as we come to mass today, this mass is a reflection of something of the future of the heavenly Jerusalem, of the heavenly liturgy where the angels and saints and all of us are gathered around the altar of the Lamb, where the Lamb once again gives of his very self to be food, to be sustenance, to give us strength. Contrast that meal with the meal, the decadent meal, of which John the Baptist was killed, the meal of Herod the Great in his court 
our Lord just received news that his cousin, his friend, the great prophet John the Baptist has just been killed. And our Lord, being very human, wanted to be away from everybody. Naturally, we do as well when the death of a loved one occurs to us. We want to be by ourselves a little bit. And so he withdrew. But never thinking only about himself, comes out of the boat and he sees this vast crowd and it says he has compassion. And in the Greek it says his heart is torn asunder with compassion. And he forgets about himself. And there he has these people. He spends the whole day with them, talking and preaching and giving them the hope that they need. And at the end, disciples being very practical men, dismiss the crowd. There's no way we can feed them. Now the Lord turns it right around on them. Says, you be generous as I am generous. Give them food yourselves. We don't have enough. All we have is, is five loaves and two fish. What's that going to do with such a great crowd? And that's the key. Our Lord said, Give it to me. Give it to me. What little you have, give to me. And they did. And this miracle was so great and so awe-inspiring that it's recorded in all four Gospels. More times than even the resurrection story of Christ. So what is it about this story but the evangelist wanted to repeat over and over again with all of its different nuance. Perhaps it's the idea that Christ gave of himself, the incarnation and redemption of the Lord as an example for his disciples. Perhaps it was the promises that our Lord gave to his disciples. Ask anything in my name and I will be given to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and even greater. Left alone to face the difficult challenges of life, we hear this very beautiful gospel today. And we hear the words of St. Paul in the second reading. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Nothing can separate us from God's love. And certainly we need to hear those words today. We need to hear those words today that give us the hope that we need. And the story of the miracle of the five loaves and two fish says to us, no matter what we give to the Lord, as small as it may be, if we hand it over to the all-powerful hands of Almighty God, what can be done? Our little prayers, we say to ourselves, what can that do to change the world? Those little small acts of kindness that we do and give, what can that possibly do to change the world? What offer sacrifices that we give up, what can that possibly do to change the world? And we underestimate the power that we have, and worse, we underestimate the power of God. That there is no prayer, as small as it may be, no prayer as distracted as it may be, no little sacrifices, no small little acts of kindnesses, not even a small smile or picking up the phone and calling a friend or a neighbor, seeing how they're doing in this time. Those small little things that we kind of just throw away. What's the big deal? Give it to God. It becomes a very big deal. So much so that there's leftovers. And so we stand now to profess our beautiful faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. And so let us turn now to the God of all righteousness and truth with our heartfelt prayers. We turn to the God of righteousness and truth with our heartfelt prayers. For our police officers during these trying times, protect them physically, emotionally, and spiritually, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the strategies put in place to fight COVID-19, that this disease will be successfully brought under control and, el and eliminated as a health risk, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all grow in respect for life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish who has gone before us in faith and love, may they receive the rewards of their goodness. And let us remember in a special way at this Mass, Mario Zuthi. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our o God of holiness, who lovingly renew our minds and hearts, we seek your mercy as we offer you these our humble prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with the angels and the archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, and with all the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and so entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. From a history of faith. and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our beloved patroness, St. Margaret, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Pro him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot now receive Holy Communion, we offer the prayer of spiritual communion. By Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I am unable now at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just like to wish all of you a very happy Sunday with you and your family. Enjoy the day, and thank you as always for all that you do for here, all of us here at, at St. Margaret's Parish. It's good to see some of you, uh, all of you of course, but some of you are coming back each week and each week we're getting more and more people to come back. So whenever you feel comfortable, you're most invited to come home. So um, thank you for all that you do in your prayers and, and your support of our parish. 
the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls.